Hello friends, this video on body fluids and circulation part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about the circulatory system in animals. That is, uh, so till now we saw that how, what is blood, what is lymph, what is their composition, etc. We also talked about the lymphatic system. Now in a very similar way, there is a system called the circulatory system which governs the flow of blood. That is how blood will flow from one part of the body to another that is governed by the circulatory system. So let us see how the circulatory system works in different animals. So first let us see what is the circulatory system. So when we say circulatory system, the system consists of several parts like the heart, arteries, veins, capillaries, blood and lymph. So all these together form the circulatory system. Now blood and lymph we already discussed. So these are the body fluids which actually flow from one part to another and along with them they carry all the materials that need to be transported. So that is their purpose. Now arteries, veins and capillaries these are nothing but the blood vessels. That is these are the tube like structures which carry the fluid. So they are arteries, veins and capillaries. And what is heart? Heart is the pump or the pumping organ which is going to pump these fluid which is actually going to tell this fluid which direction to flow. It is very similar to this. If you look at this uh, water uh, container, you see what happens when this person gives a pressure from this end the water flows from here that's because when you give a pressure here it acts as a pump and this causes the water to rise up and then come out through this tube so basically heart also is like is a pump like this so it can pump blood to flow from one region to another region so these are the parts which together form the circulatory system now we have already discussed about the fluids now we will discuss about the blood vessels and also about the pumping organ heart. Now what is the significance of the circulatory system as a whole? It helps in transportation in short. Now what all does it transport? It helps in transport of gases. For example, each and every cell of the body needs oxygen. Similarly, each and every cell of the body produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct of uh, cellular respiration. So they want to get rid of carbon dioxide. Now how do they transport these gases? So the transportation of gases, whether to take in oxygen or to supply oxygen to different cells or to take carbon dioxide out of different cells. So that is facilitated by the circulatory system. It also helps in transport of nutrients that is food is being prepared in one part of the body and then it is distributed to all other parts. Transport of hormones. Hormones again are synthesized at certain sites of our body. Not everywhere hormones are synthesized but then they are carried from their site of production to their site of action with the help of the circulatory system. Transport of wastes from the cells, as I said, as I said, since each and every cell inside the body are ca is carrying out a lot of functions, so there is a lot of waste materials which are just being produced from each cell. So those waste materials also need to be transported to the appropriate places to be excreted out of the body. So that transportation is also facilitated by the circulatory system. Transport heat to maintain body temperature. Now, there has to be a uniform body temperature maintained throughout the body. Now, it, it is not possible that you have some, in some part of your body, the temperature is very high, while in some other part, the temperature is very low. So, that is not really possible. So, the heat also needs to be transported throughout the body to maintain a consistent temperature. Contain cells that fight infection. Circulatory system also have cells. For example, if you talk about the WBCs, they help to fight infection and that means they also help to build up the immunity of the body. So these are some of the uh, important significance of the circulatory system. So now let us talk about the circulatory system in different animals. So let us look at the different types of circulatory system which are present in different animals. Now there are two forms of circulatory system. 
One is open circulatory system and the other one is closed circulatory system. So let us see what is open circulatory system. So open circulatory system is the one where we have the concept of hemolymph. That is, there is no distinction between blood and lymph. Rather, there is just one body fluid called hemolymph. Hemo means uh, hemo is uh, derived from the word hemoglobin. So, and lymph, you already know what is lymph. So, a combination of blood and lymph is hemolymph. So, in this kind of circulatory system, what happens is that the organs bath in blood. So, blood is not present or blood is not enclosed in tube-like structures. But instead, blood is present everywhere. I mean, all the organs are something like they are floating in the blood. So blood is pumped by heart in body cavities. So, so the tube-like structures or the blood vessels are absent in open circulatory system. So this kind of circulatory system is found in mollusks and arthropods. For example, uh, the octopus or the insects. In all these, you have the open circulatory system. Now here, since the blood is not enclosed in vessels, so the pressure is quite low because when you enclose something in a small vessel, so the pressure actually increases. But in this case, since blood is just present in the, all the open spaces, so the pressure is quite less. And since the pressure is less, therefore the animal should move in order to make the blood move. So if the animal is static for a long time, the blood also doesn't move much because there is no pressure created inside the body. So that is open circulatory system. Whereas closed circulatory system, the blood is enclosed in blood vessels. Now, since the blood is enclosed in vessels, therefore the pressure is created. So the blood flows from region of higher pressure towards lower pressure. And here there is a clear distinction between blood and lymph. So the interstitial fluid is separated from the blood. So interstitial fluid is nothing but the lymph. And the lymph is again, not only uh, the like, Look wise it is different from blood but also the flow of lymph is also taken care separately. That is the lymph flows through the lymph vessels whereas the blood flows through the blood vessels. So the system itself is different. So in closed circulatory system the blood is pumped by the heart through blood vessels and doesn't normally fill the body cavities. So here it is everything. The entire blood flow in our body happens through the blood vessels like the arteries, veins, arterioles, capillaries. This type of circulatory system is found in vertebrates and some invertebrates also. So all vertebrates have closed circulatory system whether you talk about human beings or you talk about uh, uh, fishes or amphibians, reptiles. So all of them have a closed circulatory system. So now here in this lesson we will specifically talk about the closed circulatory system and that too we are going to talk exclusively about the human circulatory system. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.